Oh, okay, there we are. Meeting of the Conway Board of Assessors on Wednesday, September, uh, no, October 4th. 5th. 5th, sorry. Been a busy week. Wednesday, October 5th. Uh, call to order at 5.16 p.m. Present are Roxanne uh, Heron, Russ French, Lee Whitcomb, and Lori Lucier. And the first order of business is to review the minutes from our prior meeting on <coughs> September 21st. Sorry, well, that's all right. And town administrator Barony. <laughs> uh, he was sneaking over there. Uh, you'll have to trip over cords if okay. you know this way. Can I turn it yeah, on? Yeah, your shit? Okay, sure. So I'll just I'll switch corners. I'll trip over the cords and switch the corners. <laughs> Say not there, yeah. Doesn't change the, the uh meaning of mm -hmm. this. Hey world, excuse the shuffling. <laughs> A typo in there. Yep, one mm -hmm. just one little letter omitted, but it does not change the meaning. Wrote no instead of not. <laughs> Same thing, me. Just bad grammar. <laughs> I'll see you a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three. Accepted as presented. We have to sign this? Sign we'll one. sign one. Okay. And we'll see the one, one where I did the little. Oh, I was because I don't. I think it's just my allergies, but if it's cold, I don't know. Okay. Our agenda comes next to her. The new review new mail and pay any bills. We do have that bill from uh, Cartographic, which is for quarterly maintenance. Oh, right, our quarterly maintenance fee. Right, for tax map maintenance. Uh, that is very standard. And so it's four hundred seventy-five dollars, as it is every quarter. So I. So what's that now? That is for our <coughs> for the annual map maintenance by the quarter mm -hmm. rather than once a year. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I move to pay this bill to Cartographic for four seventy-five. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Do you say aye? Aye. I said aye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. Oh, new listings and permits and so forth. We do have one new listing. You may have noticed it. Scott Sumner's house on Whateley Road has gone on the market mm -hmm. for four seventy nine nine, and advertises it as a home with hobby farm. 
Now, did they take off some of the land? Because it looked like part that was a barn is not included, or no? I think it's all included in this offer. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, they have oh, they have two and a half parcels actually. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Okay. It's. I uh, see Malcolm's is off. I know. I'm hopeful. Mm. Oh. Malcolm's is off the off the website. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. I haven't spoken to him recently enough to know anything about it, but we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. See what we can find out. Hmm. Yep, so we'll watch what that one does. And on oh, listings, new permits. New permits are here. We also had, I also looked up with regard to the Habitat for Humanity home. Uh, in the past, we had had a rural development house built for which we were restricted for, for 15 years from valuing it any higher than $90,000, regardless of what the market value was. So I wanted to research and see what the story, if there was a similar situation with this. And the only thing I can find in this very substantial contract is that the, own, the new owners must agree to sell it for no more than $200,000 when they choose to sell. That's a restriction on them. So, so does that limit us to what we can yes, assess it for? It does because you know we certainly can't value it for higher than that if they are not allowed to sell it for higher. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it turns out. Yep, but I thought that was a point of interest and we'll add that to our files. And for have our usual little assortment of permits here, we can <laughs> each take some. How many years did you say they, they had to wait before they could go over that? Does it say this one? Forever, I did not notice or... a particular. Uh, let me look. Let me, let me ask I was going to say they can't. I don't they, believe they habitat. Happen at that forever. It's usually no, like they three can't. years. Did you say 20 years? Was that the other one was 15? The other, the other one was 15. Yeah. So what is this for? Oh, here it is. What is it? This is the paragraph about the resale restrictions. It does not list any number of years. Hmm. Okay, covenants running with the land encumbering this project for the term of this agreement and are binding upon the project's successors and title. That was the term of this agreement. I'll have to go through it in greater detail. Yeah, I'll keep that out so I can go through it and get the red pencil. Isn't that a cute little shed? Oh, if oh, I did I take a look at that one? I'm sorry. I think so. This is the North Hill Drive. This one says the Barnyard Enterprise. So. Yep. Oh, yeah. My bad. Easy to fix. I wish they would all use the same. Oh, I know. <laughs> Locate things in the same place yeah, on the floor. Yeah. 
Right. It would simplify, but the plumbing is different from the electrical, yeah. it's different from the residential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the people who just bought the land up the part piece up there. Oh, very good. See, there's one I'll take them as you finish, because Roxy's already seen those. Oh, it looks like he's moving right along on the little barn there on our uh, Bob horses. Yeah, very much all the plumbing the deck around it and everything. Now. Okay, so what do you I think you didn't see that one. Which one? Was that oh, this one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm oh, good in the house at the corner of Hoosick and Matthews is coming right along. This is the wiring permit. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very good. That takes care of permits. Um, we did have a couple of other things from the registry. Uh, mostly internal transfers, if you might say, <coughs> within the family. In fact, all of them are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, not a single actual arm's length transfer or anything like that among them. Basically, for um, I think three quick claim. Yeah. And uh, one warranty deed. Mm -hmm. Well, so what's that mean? A quick claim means you sell what you think you own. <laughs> uh, you're not trying to make any presentations that it was ever surveyed or that you're selling what you believe you bought and owned. Okay. In a warranty deed, there was a better description and the deed to you was warranted, warranted as having uh, had sufficient research done or surveys done or whatever to, to support that description. Okay, this is the recorded copy of the Forsier piece that we saw a couple of weeks ago with the preliminary copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so nothing new there. Oh, sure. This one? Yep. I don't think it hurts. We have um, a little just bit internal business to make up here. Um, when we did the last motor vehicle excise warrant, it had two town vehicles in it and we deducted them before doing the warrant. And so the sum went out without them, but Lynn inadvertently uh, loaded them into the system. So now we have to abate them. We have to re-warrant them and then abate them. 
right away and do steps to get rid of it. So this can be said to be an abatement at the treasurer's request. It doesn't recall, um, require a standard abatement application. Right. Thank you. We're certainly seeing the numbers of recordings, you know, recorded actions dropping right off. And our inventory on the market has been very stale. Nothing new, nothing moving, mm. except for this one new house coming on and we'll see what happens with that, yeah. We also have some standard motor vehicle abatement applications, two of them a year. Uh, both vehicles sold or traded. Okay, certificate so registration of the new vehicle with the old plate. So that's good. That takes care of that. When this gets back to you, Larry, can you fill mm -hmm. out this page about Toyota likes to send a page? When can we expect yep. to hear your, yep. you know, get your uh, yes. check and so forth? Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. The certificates and the Okay, let's skip over the chapter applications for the moment, uh, except for one little couple of quick points. Um, I um, I'll wait till you're done with that. Is that it? Yes, just the two. Yeah, and then the one cover sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you remember we had a question as to whether or not land that's now horse pasture as opposed to cow pasture <coughs> could be in chapter 61A. And I wrote to Lauren to get the clear distinction from our state advisor. And she said it should be just applied 
for cropland pasture and not horse pasture. And so uh, that was the answer there. And very good. She also sent back a notice that yes, as far as exemption applications are concerned, the state really prefers, it's in the wording with a little openness to allow room in the towns, but it's preferable to get the proven documents indicating income uh, for the prior year and where it's required. And that should be bank statements, investment statements, um, the income page of your federal tax return. And so we are going to be asking, we're, we're telling people that it's now required to send those in as part of your application. And um, that's simply, we'll, it's, a, it's across the board for all of our low-income senior applicants. No, that they will have to have to submit that um, proof with it. And as, of course, as always, that will be in a locked cabinet until we're able to shred it. I think it's three years we have to keep it. The, <clears throat> Oh, Roxanne, report on the MAAO conference, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I did not attend. Um, you notified me at the last minute on Tuesday, and I did not have a... Um, yeah, my, my confirmation my should confirmation. have worked for you. Well, just your confirmation was a bill. Mm -hmm. It didn't say paid, it was just a bill. It hasn't been paid, we're going to have to pay it. Well, so I'm not going to go there with a bill and say I want to get in. Well, that's, that's proof that we registered. Was what so you was. haven't even paid it? <laughs> no, not yet. You'll have to create so a bill. I'm and glad pay I it. didn't go and have to try still, to. Oh, yeah, they would still have, have to pay it. They wouldn't have well, objected. Yeah. I, I'm not saying you don't have to pay it, but I'm just right. saying I didn't want to go and have a problem of getting in because we didn't pay it or whatever well, the case may be. I'll contact the MAO and say, listen, you know, we are paying for this. We couldn't get there. Could you please send us the information? That would be a good help mm -hmm. if they can do that. Okay. Yeah, I was looking forward to going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was too. Um, lead to report on tax bills. Bills are almost out. Um, we had one or two final little things to iron out um, with the folks at QDS who do our who publish and print our bills, they have to justify all of their figures, of course, against what we put into the state for our values. And sometimes there's a slight rounding error and something like that. So we're working on those. That should be finished tomorrow, in which case bills will go out very, very soon. Um, we're working along there, yeah. The tax rate, of course, was set at $17.15 per thousand which is down 80 cents from last year's 17.95 and will serve to partially offset the increase in values. No, it's not going to offset it completely. We wish it all wish it did. Uh, we pay the bills too, but it will partially offset it and I hope that that will help most folks. We ended up putting an amount of $33,282.29 into the overlay for the coming year, which added to the 33,000 plus that was already in the overlay balance gives us a new balance of $66,328.52 with which to cover the coming year's uh, abatements and exemptions. Now, generally speaking, we've been running around $25,000, $26,000 a year is our average lately, but uh, we don't know when that Verizon matter is going to get settled, and we'll be billed for that. So I think it's important if we can. What matter is that? Verizon is once again suing all the towns in Massachusetts. They really? do, they do oh, this yes. every year. They do this every few years. They sort of... They did it and we settled it all in 2018, I think it was. And then since then, they've decided to do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't agree with the centrally valued numbers that the state comes up with and tells the towns what to build. Oh. 
However, the state also will not approve our values and our tax rate unless we use what they've sent us. And so they sort it out at the appellate tax board with with Verizon. Uh, the towns do not have to go individually, thank goodness. And um, but we do individually have to pay any abatements that are finally agreed upon with the ATP. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep a decent little buffer there without holding back money that should be returned to the taxpayers. That's the thing. If you get a substantial amount in overlay, you want to return it to be able to be used for other purposes. But right at the moment, until we know how that works, 66 is not an uh, extraordinary number to have on hand. Last time, I think we had to pay about $3,000 a year for a number of years. So that can add up very quickly. Our five-year average, yes, for abatements and exemptions per year is 28,748. Yep. And of course you see what happens each year is an individual year. And we also have to report on that, how much is still outstanding as of July, uh, June 30th from the collected taxes. In other words, how much in taxes had not been collected as of June 30th, that was 54,000. So us having 66 is good because we have enough that we could cover it if we had to, but since June 30th, Jan has collected more of that 54,000 and she is agreed to go into payment plans with some people and she's put in um, liens, tax takings against others and a tax taking protects the town, but absolves it from having to go through overlay. So we actually, our potential future liabilities, instead of being the 56,000 that it was on June 30th, it's probably in the two or $3,000 range. Oh. And that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's very prompt about following through and taking care of the town, protecting the town's mm -hmm. position very well with regard to that. Yep. There will be a special town meeting on December 10th. The warrant is closing on November 7th. And well, that hasn't been set yet, but that's my Okay, that's roughly. My, yeah, right. Yeah. Roughly then. And we want to make sure that our request for acceptance of the uh, general law with regard to raising the income limits for people who are on personal exemption, exemptions. Um, if the town passes that, we can raise the income limit by a certain percentage per year. Right now it is 20,000 for single people, 30,000 for a couple. And that's income per year after the social security deduction. That, that's not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, if we increase it a bit, we can also keep up with inflation a little bit more and and what's that for the, the senior? This is the senior low income exemption. But that doesn't that go by your whole, whole house or your whole it's your assets as well as income. So okay. yeah, the law, this new law that or the new article that we'd like to accept uh, does not do anything about the assets, mm. just about the income section of it. And who sets the amount each year that it can it's, be raised? It's a figure determined by the state. Yep. Yeah, because if I'm correct, you can only have like a forty thousand dollars in the whole estate, in your whole estate, excluding your house. Yes, right. For a single person, fifty-five for two. So I mean, just a vehicle these days. I mean, I don't know how anybody meets it. It's not easy, and and the people who receive that exemption. Uh, Generally speaking, well deserve it. Um, it's a tricky thing, yeah. The economy has changed so much mm -hmm. since these laws were updated and they were updated without any sort of vehicle to um, keep up with things. Mm -hmm. So as I say, I think we'll, we had voted before earlier in the year to ask uh, for that to be done. And so we'll bring it up. I have one thing I'd like to mention. That okay. I, I saw um, 
it's about a senior um, workout program. Oh gosh, not oh, that one again. <laughs> Why? Oh, well, we bring that up every year, almost. Well, every few years, we bring it to town meeting. And what happens? The problem is that none of the departments have any work they want done or that they want to have to supervise. We ask all the departments. Or the time to supervise. Or they don't have the time to supervise it. We ask, do you have any uh, anything that folks could do for your department? Stuffing envelopes? Anything. You know, cleaning out gardens, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in the past, every single one has said no, because we would have to, you know, supervise it. That's extra bookkeeping for us. Mm -hmm. It is included in the, the person who participates in it has to report it on their federal income tax, the mm -hmm. income, mm -hmm. not on the state, but on the federal. And so we've. Yeah, you have to take out. Um, yeah, I have to take out Medicare. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to bring it up again, but in the past, it hasn't had a warm reception. Mm -hmm. oh, I, could, I could see it being successful in a city. Yes. Where there's, yeah. there's a lot of inner city projects, but. Right, yeah. I would think it would depend too upon like the job you needed doing and being mm -hmm. able to match a senior with that skill. Yes, exactly. Like it was popping into my head, well, records retention, if we hire some, you know, hire somebody to go through, and call the things that don't need to be held on to. Well, see, our stuff's already cold. Yeah, we, we did, we did that we before the big thread. Yeah. And that's for all three that's departments. That's a good one, but here. if we had got some money for a scanning project, that could be something that someone could do. Mm -hmm. Right, but you have to do the culling for yes. all the departments before that. So yes. that's the yes. first step. That's why I haven't right. even gone further with that because right. they won't give me a quote until I know exactly how many I file drawers mm -hmm. we need to digitize. Cubic feet, right. It, yeah. Right. They do it by the piece, basically. So, right. and it's a huge project. And that might be something if somebody had enough talent, if, if, the, if the department felt confident that the person could handle doing it correctly, mm -hmm. um, that might be a time saver for some departments. That could be. And, then, you know, and depending upon the job, that's where the question of supervision right. Right. comes in again yeah i mean it might be the kind of thing where if you had somebody who was willing to separate out according to the schedules and then once they've done all that work somebody could come back and just check and make sure that they weren't getting rid of something that i think the departments was needed. The now would be the fire department the police department the ambulance the highway because jan and you jan did, <laughs> when we did the big shred last year jan yes. did hers i did the board of health we did the assessors and the town clerk was done when jenny mm -hmm. left yeah. So those were cold last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, we're in decent shape. Yeah. We're in very good shape. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't have drawers of stuff. We, we right. Binders and. And certainly shelves. the police wouldn't want. No. That would be a, a big question for supervision. Oh, yeah. You there. wouldn't yeah. want. Yeah. No, you, yeah, yeah. You'd have to that, ideally pick the right person for that job. I'm not sure that would, they would even be able yeah, to. Right. To be I, I think not. Yeah. Probably. But, well, what about uh, we'll um, ask the our departments department. again? Do we need someone to go around and do some collecting of information? I guess that would be nice, but I don't. I mean, I guess I'm wondering how much is done. I mean, I guess I questioned um, what what I've got in thinking of is, um, you know, incomplete homes. You told me you go and assess them every year. And I looked at incomplete homes. We have over 97 homes that are incomplete. Mm -hmm. So you have to go and look at them every year. We, yes, or we catch up with the people or whatever, yeah. Well, what do you mean, what you catch up with people? Do you go Well, with? I might see someone up at Baker and I say, how are you doing on the house? You know, how's it coming along? Where are you now? Have you, you know, got this much finished? Or what have you done since last year? And well, I bring that information back. Well, that doesn't really, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. It seems like you should, you, we, we're supposed to go and visit these homes every year to see. I mean, they get a huge, a lot discount on their property assessments. If it's they yes because the house isn't finished they get right. discounted proportionately exactly so the shouldn't that they don't be checked own. 
Should yeah. that be checked on every year? I mean, that's a huge amount. Some have not changed in many, many years. I know. But it can be a, a number of amount in taxes, yes. Right. I'm just saying, do we check on those? Do you go and right. physically so it, look? It should be an assessor as part of a site visit, though. Absolutely. Not just somebody that doesn't understand asking questions about it. Well, that's fine. So I'm asking, do we do that every year? Uh, to every unfinished house, not every year, no. Most of them, yes. Really? Okay. So I'm just wondering how that goes about as an assessor's group and who does that and what happens. It's included as part of the site visits, our regular round of site visits. And that happens every year? Well, except in COVID years, yeah. Okay, because I haven't, I'm just looking at some of the information that, in the records and I don't see that happening. And does that put on the record card as to when you go to? Usually, I must admit that I see, sometimes I see something, I was like, wait a minute, we were there two years ago. I have to go dig out the notes and sure enough, we were there two years ago and came back and did not immediately put the business into the computer. Had probably other things going on or someone came in or the phone that's rang. That's why and, we want that tablet. Because yes. it goes into the computer during the site visit. But that's on the Tyler program only. Mm. And yep. it's a fabulous. It is. It's fabulous. a fabulous tool. But um, we'll have to see. Now, speaking of valuation programs, I have a number of questions pulled together to send to Patriot. Have um, either of you thought of any others? I can send you the list of what I have and you can see what I'd like to I, add to I it. I think I mentioned a couple of comments. Back. Yes, I put them in, I believe. Um, you know, I'm not as familiar with the program as like you are, so I really don't know as many questions to ask. Okay, you're good? I don't, yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay, well, I'll collate them. I'll send them out to you in case you want, something comes to mind that you want to add to it, then we'll get it submitted to them. Mm -hmm. Okay and see what they have to say and what they have the numbers and everything else. I guess I would be interested to see how they lay it out. I think I mentioned that, how they lay out their, and um, what the information is on the property card. I printed one out from their website, from the, from the GIS website. Mm -hmm. And it's very basic, just as ours is. So it's not much different. Oh, is that the one I saw? It was on your desk the other day. Right, Ashfield. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes we could go to Ashfield Assessors. Mm -hmm. and print out a property record card mm -hmm. from that mm -hmm. to see what they show on it. And that's a good part. That's a very good thing to do. Yes. Yep. Um, I guess we'll get to the... And can mm -hmm. you customize it? I guess that would be it. How much can we customize that gets right. put on there? Yep. That's an important question. And also, are there fields that we can label and use when they're presently not used? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. One, for example, that's come up a lot lately is the number of someone's forest management plan. And I, I need to know my plan, you know, when does it expire? And so we have to look up the number and find the plan and all that's in their folder, but uh, it's still important to, it would be nice to have it more readily available. Mm -hmm. Yep, right there, for example, or AP land and APR, we use that as a land influence now. And, uh, so we can hunt for land that's in APR and get a report just on that to show us how many acres and so forth are in APR or in conservation restriction, these different categories. Well, I just have one question, just back to what we were. How many site visits do you do a year on average? Well, the last two years, we haven't done any. Right, visit. very, very almost none. Drive by. Right. But that. Except for, except for people that apply for abatements. Yeah. Right. Because we did some abatement. Okay, so right. it's been a couple of years since you've done any of that. Oh, yes, any significant amount. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID. Prior to that, we could do. Well, Malcolm. Six or eight a day. Malcolm went around and did yes. quite a few of them. Yes. Pictures. In 2018, he got people. to every house. But what I saw was like what he did would be like exterior only. Yes. So how do sometimes you know, he got into the interior. So how do you know if someone's finished or done any work on what they're saying is incomplete? 
Hmm, how do we? We ask for definite details, and then generally speaking, can we see? And what if they don't want you to come in? What do you do? Then we you have no choice but to take them at what they say, unfortunately. Well, that doesn't make gonna, sense. Well, I mean, we take we, we use the exterior as a guide. Uh -huh. And as the Department of Revenue agents have said, generally speaking, the interior of one's home is at least as nice as the outside, if not a little nicer. So why not? If your outside is average, say the inside is average to good as a reasonable assumption that they won't let you in to show you. And if they don't like it, they would have to apply for abatement and then there would be an interior visit. Would that not come in on an inspection after the permit's been pulled? Not necessarily. The, bill, the occupancy permit, I think, can be issued before the house is completed now years, these days. Okay. I think certain aspects of it have to be completed, but others can be finished at the owner's leisure, especially if they're if they are their own contractor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, it just the, just it seems like there's like a hundred homes that are incomplete, and it's like are we checking on those because that could make a big difference instead of adding more um, things to assess. Try to bring those up to date and you know, bring the, you know, correct anything. Right? What, what do you mean by adding more things to assess? Well, we're looking so how, you know, assessing different things, like we're talking about a view tax, just different things. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, instead of trying to do that, why don't just try to get those homes up to date and if they're finished, if they're not, and that could make a big difference. Certainly anything that's more than 10% unfinished, we try to get to every year, every other year in order to keep current with it. And it also, nobody's stopping someone from coming in and saying, oh, well, I got this much more done. <laughs> not likely to, but <laughs> there's nothing stopping them. I mean, I, I know, I can, I can think of a couple that uh, went 20 years and never changed anything and it still wasn't complete. Mm -hmm. True. I mean, I people don't finish upstairs. And they don't plan to finish the upstairs. Mm -hmm. And that's understand. I get it. But there are other things I I'm assuming I don't know that people you know might finish and it might not. Right, but I think we should know that. And and then have a no, and I guess what I was looking at is like we don't nothing stated as to what isn't complete. I think notes as to what, and then you could just say, did you? whatever, like whatever, stairs or whatever the case may be. That's, that's, on our, that's usually on our notes, our handwritten notes. Oh, but can it, oh, can't sure. they be on a property card? There's no place to put them. Well, there's a space to write things. Oh, there's one little line with about 30 characters. That's about it. Mm, there's a whole side over there. You can put things. She's referring to handwriting it on the property card, not typing into the note section. Oh. I'm not saying handwriting. Oh, well, yeah. typing it into again the note section is depending upon the page is very very small. Right, is only about thirty characters and to type in. We don't have a typewriter. We have to go into so, the typewriter yeah. to type them in, and it's very limited how much you can put in. But we do have them on the on the site visit notes, which go into the person's envelope. Mm -hmm. So we can refer back to that and see what was unfinished at the time. And before we went out on another visit to that house, we would look it over. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, I will be away out of town the next couple of weeks at least, unfortunately. And I will be working from there. And we're going to be setting up a couple of afternoons, probably Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, some hours when people can come in here and sit at that computer and Zoom conference with me if they feel they must speak with me. It won't be on your computer. It'll be on a laptop. I don't want people sitting at your desk. OK, fine. That's <laughs> fine. But we'll have that available to folks who specifically um, need me to answer a question or whatever. And some folks have just been talking to me about their property for so many years that 
that's their comfort level and that's okay. So we'll try very hard to accommodate everyone that way. Uh, abatements for application and exemptions will start to come in. The abatement period is 30 days from the date that the bill goes out. And in that period, Laurie will acknowledge that we've received the application and we'll say that we'll be setting up site visits after Lee gets back. And um, exemptions, of course, they don't require a site visit. So we can start those in, well, whenever it's convenient to us. In the past, we used to wait until all of them had come in, all three months. Exemptions, personal exemptions have 90 days in which to file. And we used to wait until they were all in. And in that way, we dealt with a whole bunch in one night. We were looking at people's incomes and assets. And quite frankly, when you look at them all in one night, nobody stays in your mind. And that's that, great because that is something we do not want to know as individuals about people. No, and you don't want the sensitive information coming in and out, in and out. Right. You want to deal with it, get the right. answers, and shred it. Right. We must see it. We must okay it. Uh, or question it or deny it. But we want to do it in the most discreet. Yes, discreet way possible. Yep. Efficient. Yep. So if bills go out, you know, next week, it would be uh, that day in January, October, November, December, January. Yes, they'd have 90 days from that day in which to apply. Mm -hmm. Some folks are saying already, where's my paperwork? Where's my paperwork? Mm -hmm. So they'll be getting it in quickly. But then again, they get an acknowledgement right away that we have received it, that we will be processing it, and that it will be applied, of course, to their April bill. If they're denied, do you have to keep the documentation to show why it was denied? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I believe three years. Yeah. Yep. And at that point, it's shredded. But it is kept secure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, let's go on to these and get things wound up. I guess my question is because I was hoping to do a Zoom, so you're not going to be available. I'm afraid not. No. Yeah. A serious illness has come up in the family, and I must be there. Mm -hmm. Um. Not immediately. I can work on it from there, yes. Well, I guess the biggest problem is if we don't get that information out before 30 days, people may not even pay attention to apply for an abatement. Well, they well, can still come in and get their property card and they can still do a meeting with Lee to talk about it. And they can submit an application. And they can submit, yeah, they can still submit an application. If, if they wish to withdraw the application later. You can't actually withdraw it, but we can simply deny it. Oh, if they put an application. If they decide, if they are a little uncertain and they go ahead and I'm going to apply just so I have the application in there. Okay. And then they decide afterward, after hearing the explanations and seeing more information or whatever, Oh, okay. I understand better. I'm okay with it as it is. We had an example of that last year. And basically when they decided they yes. were okay, they, they just denied site visit. Right. And right. that's automatic. Right. Denial on the abatement. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are ways around that too. And I don't see now, I sent you all of the codes today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had some questions on those. All right. Those are all the ones that are used for both residential and outbuildings. So those are the codes that 95% of the people might possibly see on their card. You have all the residential codes. So that's anything they might see in a house drawing. Well, I didn't see find some of them. <laughs> well, if you were looking for barn and so forth, they were on the other one, on the outbuilding ones. No, there was some that I didn't find. Okay. Do we want to go through that? Well, tell me, uh, uh, give me a category. Well, and then I, kind of I guess I asked for some area. descriptions, which they're pretty self-explanatory. Well, what's the difference between an open porch, a service porch? There's a decorative porch. Um, a service porch is often partly enclosed 
it's it's an ante room before you go into the house, a mud room, you might call it. It's not as uh, nicely kept or uh, built as a living area. A, a regular open porch is a roof and a floor with some posts holding the roof up. A decorative porch is the type that we have on a lot of the older houses that has nice millwork. Yeah, frets and things like that, or um, much more decorative wood uh, elements. Okay. Yeah, more what you might call well, it. Um, okay, so you sent me these things and they have um, the rates, right? Some do, yes. So I guess I just because I would love to understand all this. And um, so why is this main finish got two different rates here? The rest are all got single. They're all the same, but I'm just wondering why that one's different. Okay, first rate, rate up. Oh, for upstairs or main floor. Oh, that's what that yeah. means. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I guess I'm not understanding. You got attached garage, mm -hmm. and it's. So that is $13 a square foot. Is that what that means? I would believe so, yes. That'd be a starting point. And then what does this mean? The garage. The uh, okay. Patch garage. I think that means, does that mean it has an additional upstairs area that's three quarters the size of the main floor? No, that wouldn't be it. No. No. Um, I don't know. I haven't used those. Because there's different rates here. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. There was some, a bunch of other things. You have a service. You highlighted fireplace and half that. No, that just kind of oh, okay. into that. So I guess, so, oh, this one was the question. Was that? Porch. Open porch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Screen screen porch. Porch. So, so that's a little why that seems odd to me. A screen porch is less than an open porch. Couldn't tell you why. <laughs> without looking at the at the catalogs that they use. And then you, the service porch is the same as the open porch. You're saying that's enclosed. Mm -hmm. But often not as good as, you know, an open porch is meant to be seen. And uh, it's part of the presentation of the house, whereas the service porch is a kind of often I would think of that as a back room. Okay. Um, let's see. So I guess I wanted, would like an explanation of what the terrace and the difference between a terrace and a patio. Pretty and I guess the same thing depending upon what they're made of. They could be concrete, they could be. Uh, laid stone, they could be brick. And we don't do sidewalks. No. So how do you determine if it's a terrace compared to a sidewalk? I don't do sidewalks, so I don't look at sidewalks. Mm -hmm. But is there a certain size that has to be considered? Well, it would be more the shape and how it's used, how the area is used. Okay. If it has lawn furniture out on it, you know. Well, I mean, I just see different codes sure. on here, and I'm questioning. And then there's because I didn't see the CP uh, concrete patio. Mm -hmm. And why is that different than the terrace and patio? Well, concrete's a, a poured concrete pad, mm -hmm. whereas a, the other one might be laid brick on sand, mm -hmm. or it might be stone on sand. Yeah. Okay. And I think I asked you, how come? Um, we don't have the rates for the garages and they don't show on that um, on those pages. We would have to go look up each one individually. Okay, because that would be information. Yeah. yeah, they don't show on the on the um, charts where we go to look and choose the particular well, you must have it line in the that we need, system, right? In the, in the computer. It's in the computer system, yes. Right. We'd have to go into the backside and look each one up individually. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the garage, the barns, um, you know, that would be interesting. Know what the, the mm -hmm. starting, and then it gets depreciated as, right? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. yeah, based on age and condition. Right. Yep. So, I mean, all that information would be good to have. It'd be good to have, and it'd be much better, quite frankly, because properties are so individual. Uh, we could do that for a few ones that are used a lot. And otherwise, I right. think it's I mean, good for got folks to come in and ask about their individual. Well, you've got a lot of stuff that we don't even use. Exactly. Right. So right. I, that's, I, I'm just saying there's, I mean, we do use a barn a lot. And, uh, Sure, sure, but we don't have that many loading docks. Right, I'm just, I'm not asking for that. We have one. I'm not asking for that, but I'm talking about the barns and the residential barns and the horse yes. barns and all that. That would be nice to have that. Bull barns and every kind of barn. Right. Sheds, yes. there's sheds in there. Yep. Um, I And I guess I wonder what the difference is between a carport and a canopy. And I don't know what else there was. I consider a canopy generally to be a smaller, uh, it, you, it would not be big enough to put a car on it. Yeah, to roof over a car. Mm -hmm. That's a canopy. I would think so, yes. That's how I would make the difference. We have one carport in town that's designed to be for one car. Mm -hmm. And it's probably eight or nine by 16, something like that. It has a roof over it. And that's it. It's not enclosed in any way. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a carport where you drive in. Mm -hmm. Yep. So some are called canopies and some are carports. So I'm just wondering what the difference are. A canopy is, for example, at the bank where you drive up to the drive up window. And it has that piece that sticks out so that when you reach out in the rain to put your things in the Mm -hmm. Drive up window, you're covered from the rain. It reaches out about two feet. Oh. Yeah, that's a canopy, certainly. Okay. Yes. I mean, my patio was considered a canopy in the carport. Well, we so tried to figure out it's it doesn't fall under any one category perfectly. I mean, if you go to the major book up there mm -hmm. there's page after page after page that well i i, I guess describes I, a canopy or describes a carport or, right and i guess what i would i would like to see is us to agree on certain things and just go with that and just say this is what it is and not have five different things in other words come up with our definition of yeah what to use for that, that and that's what i'm asking for is definitions so that if there is a question as to what it is, this is what our definition is. Is that what you're saying is in? That's what's in the book. That's what's in the book. So you just need to read the books and no. then you know what the well, definition page is. After page. Yeah. page after page. But they, it's, that's what I was looking at the other day, those books. When you oh, yeah. Came. It's like, it's like, uh, so I, I'm just trying to make it concise and easy. Well, I think for, we can define some more things. We do a lot of that in the data collection manual already. The different types of porch are, are defined with pictures. Mm -hmm. For example, there's a picture of a decorative porch, of an open porch, or a screen porch, I think. Um, you know, we, we show what each of one of them is. Uh, we could add a few more to that. Sure. Or just uh, describe what they are and just go with that. Like what is compared to a carport, compared mm -hmm. to a canopy, explain it and go with that. You know, or what is a um, patio? There's a patio and there's a terrace. Explain what those all are and make it clear and mm -hmm. just that's what it is. So, I mean, I'm having a problem with what my garage in a barn is. So I think it needs to be cleared. Well, we could add more to our data collection manual. We can make that public. Um, yeah, I think we need a site. Certainly set. sections of it. Of well, there's a lot of this that we don't use, I think. That's right, there is. Yeah, so make it what we do use. Right. And take out the stuff we don't use. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, we discussed in the data collection manual, what is a one and three quarter house? What is a one and two thirds? What's a one and a half? Mm -hmm. We state exactly how we determine that. And they're right in there. Yeah, I got that. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of that information already done and out and... We oh, well, maybe more, something I would like to available. discuss here is um, you've got a, a, of course, your detached, uh, attached garages. If I'm reading this correctly, this is your information, is $13 a square foot. Is that right? That's what that indicates, yes. 
So a detached is quite significantly higher. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And it's an entirely separate foundation that costs more to pour. Mm -hmm. And it also does not have, I mean, a, a, a detached garage usually has at least some sort of an entryway connecting it to the house. Mm -hmm. So it is connected, built a detached. Um, yeah, there can be differences. Cool. That's why they allow us both descriptions, you know, detached and attached. Well, yes, I, I understand. And that's included in the house and it's a detached. So what I'm trying to get to the point is, is if we can agree upon or decide, like um, buildings that have a, you have to separate into units. So you have one building and then you add another one, a one-story building, one-story garage mm -hmm. or barn, and it's already attached to this one. So shouldn't it be considered as attached and not a separate one? Not necessarily. It depends on the individual property. Uh, here again, if you look at some of the ones here on Main Street, they are old houses. And they have what you or I would call a shed in the back. Or what was a barn that was able to stable a horse and keep a wagon and so forth in. It's not built anywhere near the quality of the house. It never was. It was simply a secondary building that was attached to the house for the convenience of the homeowner. And we can't value that at the same rate as we can the house itself, which was built to be lived in, was much more, had interior finish. Usually one of these old barns has one light bulb in it or something like that. That's not what I'm asking about though. <clears throat> I'm talking about. You're, that's, a, that's considered, you know, that might, Okay, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I am talking about a building yep. and then a garage, two-story garage, and then you're adding on another one-story garage. And you're charging yeah. full value for those piece, parcels and they have a combined wall. Oh, you're talking about common wall allowance. Yeah, oh, is that what you're calling it? I don't know what you're saying, calling it. Yes. An attached structure is going to take into consideration the common wall allowance. Well, that's what I'm saying, but you don't. And so if you have one building, the other one should be considered attached. Well, that's going to require a different, a different. Mm -hmm. Oops. No, I'm just going to yeah, okay. do some copies while you guys are. OK. Yeah. Nothing to take notes on right now. The. Common wall allowance, quite frankly, is usually very insignificant. And we're going for mass appraisal. We're looking for the overall value of the property. Yes, we do it by describing the individual pieces of the property. But the ultimate end is achieving a market value by way of the cost approach. The value is verified and supported by the fact that all the towns, all the properties in town are now up to the current market value. Therefore, this is our 8% is what brought all the buildings up to the current market value this time and our land too, except for chapter lands. We still go at it by looking at the market value approach because one house might have an extra bathroom that the other hasn't. Um, but that's not answering my question. May I, may I ask a question? Is, is this stuff that you all can do outside of a meeting? I'm just curious because I didn't see it on the agenda and right. I didn't know if that's something well, that- Well, this is not on the agenda. We have to hold it right. for a work session. Yeah, but that's it, what I was is thinking. Is it a work section? Yes, a yes. Session? yes. But, we're deciding, but we're deciding how it should be valued. Shouldn't that be open meeting? What are you deciding on the value of? Are you asking them to actually? I think we should we should I discuss it and it. figure out how we're going to value it. I don't see any value. What need to change well, the method? Values per square foot. We use the book as a basis. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is, when you have buildings and you have them attached, 
and you're doing this, so you're paying, so this is a garage. This is a shed. It has attached built section here, right? Mm -hmm. So shouldn't this be considered an attached building and not a separate one? Because you're paying, as I see it, when it's a separate detached, it's higher priced. And you're saying because it's got a more foundation. And all I'm saying is, shouldn't we agree that it should be an attached building and not build as separate? Because they have a common wall. So you would love to have a figure for a shed with a common wall? Yes. Or a garage with a common wall? Yes, because you're double taxing it, is the way I see it. Because you're attaching it as, or sorry, assessing it as two separate buildings. Structurally, they Structurally. are individual. Well, not structurally, they're not. No, I mean, not structurally. Uh, no. In description, they are individual areas. In the a shed is not as big or as good as a garage, generally speaking. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay. So we look at them that way in order to more, more fairly value them. The shed as a shed. The garage is a bigger, more substantial building. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's valued as a garage at the higher rate. Mm -hmm. The fact that they have a common wall is not going to significantly reduce the value. And it would involve figuring out the value of the outer walls of the shed, just well, the so walls, the vertical mm -hmm. walls, mm -hmm. and taking off whatever proportion that is of the total side wall area. Yes, but it, I'm just saying it's double assessing it. I see what you're saying. And that's why I would like to agree that it shouldn't be, because you're, you're assessing it higher because of the detached stru structure, because it's got foundation and all this. And then when you have another attached thing to it, you're doing that separately too. So it's a higher price. And all I'm saying, they are attached, just like that attached garage to a house is valued less because it's attached. Because it's using that, com you said you're using that common wall. So it's, that's the way it is. Well, oftentimes the foundation of the garage attached to a house will be poured all at the same time. So there's a, an economy of scale there and it will be built at the same time. So what if this was so all costs, built at the same time? So the garage built all at the same time is going to cost probably less and someone just coming in and putting up a garage, uh, even if they attach it to the house. But let's save it for a work session. Well, then we're not there all there at a work session to discuss it. We probably can be. See what we can do. Or you get two of you agree and you bring it to a vote at the next meeting. Well, I'm, that doesn't, well. I'd like to run a few examples and see what the difference in value, how that comes out. Not yours, somebody else's. Yeah, I agree. But I just see if and there's other buildings that are attached. I just see it as being double assessed. In okay, parts of it. that's how, that's your take on it. And that's my opinion. And that's what I want to discuss. And I, I would like to come to some... Okay, decision on that. Well, that's good. And if you can bring your these discussions forward to be on the agenda, that gives us a little heads up too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Why well, I, I sent you an email about the 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 uh, house with that you said is a barn. Um, a house that's a barn. Well, you were saying you have to deduct it because it wasn't built the same as on a garage. If someone has finished off a barn? No. To live in? What's your process for getting things onto the agenda? So that they have to, Laurie it. has to know beforehand before she yeah. posts it. I just have to be asked to put it on there yep. before posting date. Mm -hmm. Which is always two days before the meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. Monday afternoon, yeah. Um, I don't recall right offhand what the question was or whose property you were referring to. Um, well, the Main Street one, the one you were talking about is being a barn, you know, different priced. 
And um, I'm, I just don't understand why it isn't um, assessed the same as the house as attached and depreciated the same year compared to- If it wasn't built at the same time- Well, it probably was. Right. Unfortunately, even brand new additions get depreciated too much because of the system. If we build, someone has a 35 year old house. Right. And they build a two room addition onto it that costs new $80,000, $80, which probably is fairly modest these days. <laughs> Simply because it's being added onto the house and it is residential space, that eighty thousand dollars is going to immediately be depreciated by the same amount that the rest of the older part of the house is. Right. So we're losing there. We're losing value. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I guess I was wondering why um, the house was. Um, it's detached, I, and I actually have it here. And, I, and I, you gave me an answer, and I just can't seem to understand why. And I would like to go over it as a group and maybe make me understand it a little better or make sense to it. Um, it's this house because it, it's being built as a detached. Mm -hmm. And it's attached why? because the back barn is attached physically to the house. But it is such the, the the garage area and that back. But wouldn't it be um, canopy sort of area are significantly different from the house in construction? But wouldn't it be depreciated to the age of the house? I see. Wouldn't it be attached and be depreciated? Open porch, carport. G G G. The barn is not because it's a barn. It's a uh, valued, well, it's, a it's an outbuilding. Mm -hmm. I know it's a garage, but we're valuing it as a barn. It is used as a garage. Right. It was built probably as a barn to hold the buggy or the Model T. But you have it listed as yours built 1960. Effective age. No, it says years built. There's nothing about effective year. Okay. Maybe it's older than that. It was built when the house was built. Are you mean, there? Huh? <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> Would it make sense to get several, like you were saying before, Lee, to get several of these examples so she can yes. look at it and put it well, on the next agenda? So that well, I asked for that ahead of time if you had any to bring to this. I sent you an email. Well, it's not on the agenda. So, okay. yeah. For this one? Yeah, I sent you an email. Before Monday? Not before Monday, you know. Monday, yeah, well, yeah, that's Monday's the day. Posted, so yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Let's get into these. I'm going to try to aim for that the next time we are all together. Okay. So um, my other thing is, so we're, can we do a Zoom? Are we going to go forward with the Zoom? Sure. Okay. Can Russ, can you do the Zoom with me? I'll do it. Do the Zoom? I don't know. Well, they can do the Zoom from wherever she is in the world. She doesn't have to be here to do it. She okay. Can zoom just in from is that interesting? <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't matter where you are. You can Zoom in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be sitting together. Right. Okay. No, okay. we can put it together as a, it'll be actually a PowerPoint as much as anything with sheets that are shown on this on the screen and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I'd like it to continue working on it while I'm away. Yes, this is not a vacation for me. This is a time when I have to be away. I'm taking the computer with me and planning to be in touch with the office and with uh, Jan and so forth on a daily basis, really. So can we set a time and day? When we can do Let me get there and see what's happening. Um, and let's get everything almost ready. Yes, make sure you have a good list of what you want on it. If we're going to use information from our data collection manual, do we need to add more to that? Well, so if you're not going to be around, how are we going to get all this done? Emails. And I can work on my computer right here, and that's where all the photos are. Oh, I can't sign that one. All the photos and everything else are that we would need to load. 
use as descriptive information and I can work on it just as exactly the way I work on it sitting right there at that desk. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was, was I supposed to sign this one? Oops, nope, that's yours. Oh, well. <laughs> I wasn't, cross I wasn't that one supposed out. to sign that one. who are ahead lands in chapter enrollment. Yeah, and haven't turned your application in. Um, is we have almost one? 200 people are people to whom we have to send out these applications should, every year. I write, sign it, no, it's and it's really important that you fill it out yourself. Completely every no. year we send you, I didn't, with the notice that it's been granted, we send you a copy it's of down, this year's sign down here. This That's year's return. <laughs> You have it. If you want, we'll send or fax you another or email you another one. But please fill out everything. If yeah, you're in Chapter 60 YNA, please be fill, sure to fill out the amount of the product that was earned from the land. Mm -hmm. Have your forest or, or your farmer sign it if someone's leasing it. It's really important that you do this yourselves. We don't have the time to do it on over a hundred applications. Almost and that's done. about how many we're having oh, to that's finish why. ourselves. That's, that's why. That's why. Before we can process like them. you couldn't sign yours. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So please try hard to sign, to fill these out completely before you get them into us. Otherwise, we have to spend more time in postage sending it back to you for additional signatures. Sign the back of that second page. It's attached to the thing because it's important. You need to sign that too. So please do that. Um, and you'll save us lots of postage money and envelopes and time. And time. Yes. And we appreciate that a lot. Okay. We got anything more from the so. I was just going to no, say, is I that the that last on the, the agenda? This is, is the last on the agenda, yes. Okay. Yeah, all right, yeah. thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Good luck with the finger or the hand cramping after all the <laughs> signatures. <laughs> Does the select board ever have to do 50 in a night? No. <laughs> oh, good. We can learn it over them a little yes, bit. You <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. There we go. I will turn I will the one. Uh, I'll bring over the warrant for the select board meeting tomorrow. It's already in. Oh, 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 right. The other one for the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. When last we saw you last Monday night for the classification hearing, it was wonderful because I sent everything in on Tuesday morning and on Tuesday afternoon, they sent us the approval of the tax rate. Oh, that's, they yeah. really, really stepped up as far as getting that work done, but they're having the local advisors do a great deal more of it now, the review before it ever gets to them. I have Does anybody else more. here want chocolate? Yes. <laughs> oh, I will uh, let Thank you know what to see. Thank you. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you all. Have a good night. Who was that? Did we de did I write deny on it? No, I said, don't we have to? No, that's in 61B. Oh, they have an adjoining parcel, uh, in, parcel. in Asheville, right? Or Buckland. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, that's what we were checking to make sure that the what was that the same one we were checking to make sure that they got um we're waiting to get the paperwork from uh Asheville on one. Yeah. Yep. What's that? This one? Nope, no. No, oh, it's another one. Yep. And as soon as Asheville has accepted their end of it which qualifies, I guess, in full on its own, then they'll send that to us and we'll accept the Conway additional land. Mm -hmm. so we don't need to hold this one? Nope. Um, 
So how do you know, or it doesn't stay on here if it's a, another parcel attached when it only has like two acres or something? It doesn't stay there. We just know. Oh, you just know. No, we know the property is well enough and everything. Because this one only has 4.3. Right, plus the three other, other acres. Okay, so you know that. Right. Yeah. It's from when they first applied, yeah. Some people put the return for two or three adjoining parcels all on one form. Oh, Some yeah. do a separate yeah. form for every parcel. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. This is, yes, it is. did we not yet <laughs> we've probably got between 30 and 35 that we haven't gotten back we yet. still haven't got right but that's not that out of close to 200 that's right <laughs> and again for those people who haven't sent them back yet oh yes please if i don't have them back they were due on the first if we don't have them back by the 17th yes then you're not going to get your chapter for the next fiscal year and right october 17th is the absolute, absolute last day <coughs> That an application can be returned or uh, mailed mm -hmm. for chapter enrollment for fiscal twenty four, and that could be sticker shock. If we don't, if we don't get it, yes, you will not be in chapter for twenty twenty four next fall. Right. We do have one new application in here. I'll try and see it, spot it. A new one. Yeah. You wrote a whole letter? No. No. Oh, <laughs> there was one that wrote a whole letter there that was kind of cool. We have a couple of people who do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now here we have, um, this is a property that sold from one party to another, and the new buyers did go and get a new amended forest management plan. It's on Hoosick Road. Uh, you can see it here. And so they're asking that uh, the... Did you can change it. I'm sure. You can change it. Uh, the important thing is that you're supposed to have it change it over into your name within six months. Uh, sometimes it doesn't happen quite that quickly, but they did do it and send it and sign it. So um, I'd like to vote that we accept it. It's previously been in chapter. They signed the affidavit saying they would like to um, keep it in chapter. Mm -hmm. So so I'll move. Agree. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, we need to get a different copy of that from the foresters. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Risk management. Pretty good turnout for festival this year. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I had to miss it. Very much so. It was my father's 80th birthday. So oh. we were all gathering at my brother's place. Oops. 
Laurie, if you'd like to save us some money, uh -huh. um, in order to do acknowledgements of receipt of abatement and exemption applications, do my postcards if you'd like, get a postcard made up. Just have where you have to fill in what date it was received. I'll leave that up to you. But will it? By the time we, by the time we do postcards on card stock. And then still pay the 35 cents to mail each postcard. Is it saving us anything? Is it saving us anything? Because the cost of the card stock, if we print our own, well, we have, the, we should still have some. I think we have some that's bright green. And I'm not a bad color for chapter. <laughs> When we're sending out cards for open houses or anything like that, I try to find the most knockout color I can find mm -hmm. so that people will notice it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they've been kind of hideous. <laughs> I understand that the cell tower out toward me uh, is hopefully going to go up next summer. Yeah. Yeah, they've actually have um, companies signing on the lease on that one, but not on the one down there. Right. They don't feel it reaches enough down here. Yeah, they don't they don't feel that it reaches enough resident, you know, enough houses yes, and yes. businesses down where down at the other end of one sixteen. Down on near the town line up on one of those on the side hill on the south. Behind Walter Goodrich's place, isn't it? Uh, yeah, just well, beyond Walters. Down. <clears throat> yeah, just beyond Walters. I know his property abuts it. Mm -hmm. Yep. The no one wants to lose that on. And it, that one is not aimed though at residents and household. That one is aimed for most that. desirable to for, give the self emergency. coverage over that. Yes. Narrow curving, difficult part of 116 yes. where there is no cell service and where there are so many accidents. Right. It's more geared aimed well, toward I don't emergency get services. Cell service. Where's one near me? You don't pick up anything from Shelburne? Shelburne. Yeah. yeah. I, <clears throat> I don't get it, but I think I'm over the knoll. Or so some of it could be who's your carrier. Hmm. Not all, yeah, and some carriers don't use. Well, I've had a couple different and they just don't work. Uh, I have to be. See, I've been lucky. I have service I have no matter walk, where I go. I have to walk outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pretty much anywhere I go, except for that little dead zone down there and the one between you and Ashfield. Mm -hmm. I've been lucky with coverage. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I can get a call. I can't text all, all the time. It just doesn't go through. If you have Wi-Fi, you can make it so your phone will do calls and texts mm -hmm. using the Wi-Fi as opposed to the cell. They still have towers on the uh, antennas on the water tower. Mm -hmm. Somebody does, right, Russ? Yeah. AT&T. It is still AT&T. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but someone who has Verizon has no service here in town. Um, I guess that's a good thing I have AT&T then. Yeah. Don't feel bad, guys. Now I have to go and copy all of these and write letters to everybody and then log them into Tyra. <laughs> we all got all carefully stapled. Now I have to unstaple them to copy them. <laughs> Staple them again to the island. Don't have to, as long as they're together. They'll be stapled. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Laurie has to take this apart, copy this, 
to send to the person with a cover letter saying it's been accepted and on what date. And then it has to be entered into the computer mm. and then filed. That is extremely this is just the end of the process. <laughs> Very time consuming. Yep. And yawn and do so. But we're about three quarters of the way there, maybe. For all of them. Oh, the signature is deteriorating really well. <laughs> this is why you need stamps. Mm -hmm. Well, you can get a stamp with all three signatures on it. Hold that. As long as it's in everybody's presence, there's no reason not to. Yeah. I still like having my hands on a movie doing them. You're still doing that. Well, that's true. I am. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, for more folks than you expected. <laughs> When are you leaving to have to go away? I'm actually leaving on Sunday. Okay. I'm just wondering if it's possible to get together today. Wednesday? To um, go over some information. Physically. Yes. Um, take up Saturday, so tomorrow afternoon or Friday. I think it's Friday. Okay. Tomorrow afternoon might be good. Okay, after two. I have to go out in the morning. Okay. I'll be back by two. Okay. Jacob the sheep. I know, I saw that. It must be a breed of sheep. Yeah, a variety of sheep. Jacob sheep. Jacob was a number heard of one. Yeah. Jacob sheep. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, your sheep expert, Russ. <laughs> yes. I actually should. I should, <laughs> I should have been changed to uh, agricultural. I got apples, pears. Peaches, <laughs> ducks, geese. Are you making money on? Mm -hmm. Well, I started selling raspberries. Oh, and I good. think I'm going to plant more raspberries because people want to do their own, pick their own raspberries. Yes, they love picking your own. 
And um, so I'm thinking I might, I got two big batch of, um, sections. Uh -huh. um, and I'm thinking of putting them more. Nice. Because they spread like crazy. Yeah, I suppose keeping them contained is the toughest part. Yeah, so I'm just, I just keep moving them. Uh huh. And now I got, instead of pulling out and throwing them, I move them and I got more than I'm thinking. Hmm. Sure. Red, black, red. Good, nice. Now, this is uh, this one from WD Coles has three pages uh, for individual and then has one. Uh, no, acknowledgement that covers all, all of them. Oh, oh, you said there was three, you had to sign all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, and the uh, don't need to sign that, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, Tebow's some sort of one elongated form in. So this is a company that owns so much land? W.D. Coles, yes, the, the lumber mill in Amherst. Yeah. Oh, Amherst. yeah, they have owned land now, it's 100 years or more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they bought a, up a lot of Sir Sosimo's land up toward Vermont and everything. They bought from Peck Lumber Company. Um, they probably, I'm um, certainly have tens of thousands of acres, I'll bet all together. Really? And they actively log it. They're on a regular cutting plan. They keep their land, they take good care of their land and definitely manage it for the well being of the, the crop. Mm -hmm. And the other species too. They were one of the properties most seriously hit by the tornado oh, up on oh. Smith Hill. Oh. Yep. It went through there oh, like gangbusters and did a terrible job. Oh. <laughs> my, my signature is kind of looking. <laughs> yeah. This one has two, I think. They have three all together, but the you only doing it one? just on the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they're reporting the whole thing in one, basically. Okay. Um, which is okay. Now they probably they might be one of the largest private landowners in common by now. Yeah. Evil. Yeah. Bill still got quite a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, they have. Well, oh, you yeah. said they had 500 or so acres, yeah. No, I think they were, they ran down to three or something. Can't imagine. No, they sold quite a lot, though, that's for sure.
You should scrape this down and refinish it. I'm getting starting to get the pen caught in the little grooves, begin the grain. Mm -hmm. Not for disrespectful. Yeah, not those who are disrespectful. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Pretty straightforward. And some will say, if you ask, you should know. Maybe. Yeah. I must have missed the, the new one. Probably breeze right past it. It wasn't anywhere the new applicant. I, I can't think of it right offhand. Well, why does it? Ooh. It's so funny. One person in town who is a former assessor didn't, didn't send or re sign or return their second page. So Laurie sent it back to him and said, Hey, you know better than this. <laughs> I've sent them back to a lot of people with a little sticky sound. Please sign and return. Mm -hmm. So most of mail and voting is you know, go through a lot of postage. Mm. Are you going to be gone for about a week? 10 days? Yeah, 11, 11 or 10 days. Yeah. That's the beginning of November? Yeah. So safely, we could say the first two weeks in November, you're not available. I'll be back the 18th. And you're leaving on the 4th, right? Even on the 4th. Yeah. Yep. And they've had the terrible droughts just like we have. They what? All of Europe has pretty much had the terrible droughts just like we have. Yeah. <laughs> Going with you. Hmm? Is the wife going with you? Howard. You're not bringing Kate? No. <laughs> well, she should get to go just so she can go shopping. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, well. Hmm. So does, does Lillian have more? Because she's only got four acres. Does it she have two of them? No, she has a total of 5.803 right. and five acres are actually in chapter. Oh, it says the point. I know it does. That's what she put in. Yeah. I'd be correcting that when I put it in the computer. Oh, <clears throat> but so little as residential. It's just that I gave her half the driveway as residential and half as business going in as far as the house. And then what the little bit that the house is on, we took that out as being the residential area. Mm -hmm. because the rest of the driveway and all is just for the commercial part of the business. Okay, just yep. wondering why, because it's yep. not only four. Good spot. Small thing, I should say.
Okay, we have all the Lee ones here, but I'm going to hold them. The all Lee right. properties, Dean Lee's all the family. Yeah. Yep, because I'd like to go through them in detail and make sure that we have the right ones on the right ones. So they can wait till the next time we all meet. So what is today? What is that this? Fifth. Fifth. Oh, we need to change the camera. Yep. I, do. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm gonna do it, but I've got wires between me and it that I don't feel like climbing <laughs> over. Oh, technically our next yeah, so what well, meeting the next meeting is October 19th. Yeah, so, the October 19th. So will we have that? Or? Yeah. Okay. We can do it remotely. Yep. Oh, we're going to do it remotely? I she will. Oh, we'll we'll do it remotely. Remotely. We need at least two people I, here to sign things. I don't expect to be. Uh, Thank you, Russ. Mm -hmm. I don't expect to be back by then, but I just don't know. That would be. It would be I'm horrible. Sure that I would, yeah, it would, it, it, would, it would be horrible if you were back by then, but it would also be good for us if you were back. That's by right. Then. That's right. <laughs> it has pros and cons on that. Yep. Now goes to Lori. Yes. Thanks, Thanks Ross. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Seven o two. I second. All in favor? I second. Aye, aye. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you.